one one because it's gonna be pretty much like how I normally do my classes at university schools just started here in Mexico a couple of weeks ago so I'm back teaching there as you guys know I teach in universities I have my premium courses we have our YouTube channel and a lot of other different projects going around so um, today we're gonna be doing a fan art let me go into full screen mode there we go let's just check our display right here perfect 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 so today um as you guys know last week one piece launched its uh live uh like adaptation and it's been getting a lot of praise so my brother is a huge fan of the series i'm gonna be honest i haven't seen the whole thing like the whole anime thing i've started watching the netflix thing and it's very enjoyable so i want to make a gift for him and i want to make a keycap for his uh, mechanical keyboard we did something similar earlier this year and today we're going to be working on a keycap for like a um, a one piece now i think it's a rather not rather but it's quite relatively simple um thing so we might even go through uh doing some like hand painted textures or something we'll see we'll just keep pushing and keep exploring until we do something cool but the first thing we're gonna start strong here with a poll because i need you guys in chat right now to tell me which one of these two logos is the one that's like most official from what i've i was doing some research and from what i saw both of them are like official but i don't know you guys tell me should we go with logo a which is this one right here or should we go with logo b which is that one right there which one of these two logos should we go with this is logo a and this is logo b you, you guys do know what the keycap is, right? We've been working with some of them uh, recently. So a keycap, let me show you. I think I have a picture right here. <laughs> Images. This one. So this is a keycap, and it's something that goes on top of your keyboard. And I've seen some really, like, fancy decorated keyboards. And today we're going to do something similar. But I need to know which one we should pick. The jaw of the look B looks better yeah i think this one is the one that's like on the official like uh manga like issues and stuff like that we got b from Roycel, b from harambe let's see how the poll is going we got the poll on the top of the chat so if you go to the chat on your like little chat on the top right corner you should see like uh, something that says a uh, current poll and you can vote right there as well so right we're gonna go with b it seems like we're going with the v which i think it's fine it looks really cool as well Okay, nice. So let's go with V then. The The way we're going to start is we're going to start with this base right here. This is a basic STL that I got from Thingiverse. And uh, this one, I, I don't have the name of whoever uploaded this. I'm sorry, but I'll make sure to link it on our uh, YouTube video tomorrow. And um, this is just the basic profile with the proper measurements and everything. I even have, let me go full screen real quick. I even have my little whoa, Cthulhu keycap right here. So it's this one. It's very, very small. I don't think I can zoom in because the, the like the zoom is not there. But this one goes straight into the Cherry MX uh, type of switch, which most mechanical keyboards have the the, the um, Cherry MX profile. So should be fairly easy to, to do. Tristan, welcome, my friend. Welcome to the chat. Welcome, Asterix Gaming from Romania. Dude, I don't think I have Romania on my map. Uh, a couple of days ago, I, I announced that I have a map up, up here. And uh, it's a map from the world. And one of my goals is to get a student from every single part. So I think you're the first one from Romania that has uh, has mentioned that. So, Sai Tarak from Discord. Awesome. So for those of you that are just joining, uh, we do have a Discord channel with amazing content and amazing community. So we'll, we'll link that thing in just a second for anyone to join if you guys are not part of it. Okay, so let me get pure ref real quick. And let's go back to uh, like Google. I need to get the logo again. So One Piece logo. And it's the small jawline, so... Let's copy this, pure ref, and we're going to keep this one right here. Perfect. So one of the things that I'm uh, thinking about is we can't make, we can't really make the bones super long because then if you press the key down, it's going to press other keys uh, that are close to it. So I think like roughly like a size like this should be good. We'll still keep 
um, our skull inside of the profile. And again, we shouldn't be like affecting any other key keys in our keyboard. And another thing that's going to be important is that we don't want to have a lot of volume going up. So my Cthulhu keycap does rise quite a bit. This one, I think I'm going to leave it a little bit less intense. So this is going to be, again, roughly the size of the element. One of the things I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to document and I'm going to save this camera as costume two. So that at any point I zoom out, zoom in or do whatever, and I need to go back to that specific scale, I can go to document and just click on costume two and it's going to jump back to that costume two element that we just saved. So at that point, I'm going to be sure that we can keep the same, uh, the same thing. Daniel, our legend is right here. So awesome. Let's see. We got a question from Tristan says, I'm doing your AAA Forge weapon. I was curious right now if you're going to do a follow-up of implementing it into Unreal Engine 5. I think you should do a... Yes, it's free. We actually have two or three free chapters from that course and from our other courses in YouTube. So I'm trying to do this thing where I show free stuff on YouTube and then, of course, our premium courses. So we'll link the, um, we'll link the, the YouTube video in just a second. There we go. Thank you, Sar. So let's start with the basic sphere. I'm just going to append. And we're going to append a sphere. By the way, let me know if the music is fine in regards to volume. I'm going to make this thing a little bit less intense. And of course, it's going to be way, way smaller. So roughly around there. I kind of want that has to be like a half circle. So it's going to be like right there. And uh, let's start sculpting this one. So I'm going to jump straight into Dynamesh. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our clay buildup. I'm going to change the alpha to a round alpha, like alpha 6, so that we get a little bit better, more, more control. And let's start sculpting the eyes. They're quite big. So I'm going to go quite big. Now, the big question is, should I do it in my own style, which is always like a little bit realistic, stylized, or should we try to keep it exactly as the concept? What should we do? Let me know in the chat. Should we do my own style or should we do it a little bit stylized? We could even do realistic, like the new Netflix series, they did it uh, a little bit more realistic. And I think it looks like interesting, uh, but I'm not sure. You guys are more fans of the show probably than I am. So um, my own style, okay. Your style says Rose King's here, what's up, man? My own style, cool. Hey, I'm glad you guys appreciate like originality. There we go, Asterix with the gifts. Man, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for the gifts, for the subs. Awesome. Okay, if we're gonna do it my style, then I'm gonna do it a little bit realistic stylized, as I've mentioned. Not super stylized, but just a little bit, which means, for instance, the upper like cheekbones or jaw, I am gonna include on this element right here. So this will be like the mouth, and I'm gonna add a little bit of a zygomatic arc right here. I'm also going to remove a little bit of volume on this area. Did you guys ever see this show from Car Cartoon Network called um, Billy and Mandy, I think? I'm not sure how the translation goes in, in English, because I saw it in Spanish, of course. Uh, but Billy and Mandy, and there was Grim, which was like the Grim Reaper. And I always liked his like uh, super like sharp cheekbones. Very cool. Yeah? Yeah, it was a fun show. That was a, that was a cool time for Cartoon, Cartoon Network. And of course, the classics. My favorite show back in the day was a Dexter's Lab. Oh, I love that show. Let's go here. Yeah, they just slave the Green Reaper. Yeah. <laughs> and then and, and Eddie. I always thought that and Eddie was a little bit, you know, weird. Like the character design was really weird uh, for my taste, but it was it was a good one. Let's see, which key will it be? Um, I, I'm thinking it's gonna be the delete key because I got my Cthulhu on the esque key. So this one's gonna be on the other side of my keyboard, which is uh, the uh, the delete key. Let's increase the resolution a little bit here on the Dynamesh. Let's see, we got another question. Thank you for all your content, Bram Asterix. It's very important to have such a driving force for people learning 3D art. You're welcome, man. And, and thank you for the support. It, it means a lot to us to know that what we're doing uh, matters and it's helping people out there. It's my goal to, to try to share as much information as possible because I do believe that more people doing art is going to make a better world as well. So, so thank you, thank you for, for all that. Okay, let's append a new sphere. And this one's going to be the lower section. Someone is asking if I saw Ryukendo. No, I have not seen that one. So I'm sorry about that. Courage! Yeah, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Jokomisa. That, that was a, a great show as well. Very, very nice. 
Yes, make art that war. The next course is a Maya introduction course, uh, which is going to be a short one. It's for people who want to get into the 3D world and, and are complete beginners and they want to jump and learn about Maya. So that one's in, it's on the making right now. And after that one, we are going to have a Maya intermediate course uh, focusing on environments. So that one's very cool as well. It's uh, it's coming along. Well, we got the plans already. I haven't started recording that one. The, the Maya basic course should be releasing early next week and the Maya environment course should be releasing at the end of the month and then next month for october we are going to have marvelous designer after that it's either x gen for november or um some people were asking for substance painter so we might do something about substance painter there's a lot of softwares i can teach you guys and and that's uh, that makes me very happy because that means that we can keep talking about 3d for a long while okay let's carve in a little bit more of the psychomatics here we got five teeth, which is a little bit weird, because usually you would get like two teeth on the front. So we'll we'll take care of that in just a second. Now, here's a, ter a trick. Uh, one of the things that I'm seeing right now is that the skull is way too low. So I'm going to push the skull a little bit higher. I'm going to go to the Cherry MX subtool, and I'm going to control click to mask it out. And then I'm going to return to my original tool here, and I'm going to select this option, which moves all of the subtools. So the jaw and the little head, they're both moved at the same time. And that's going to give me a... A little bit more control as well. This is going to be something like that. Now, let's append the bones. So it's going to be a cylinder. We're going to make the cylinder... Oh, now we need to disable that, of course. Let's scale this down. And usually for 3D print, I've mentioned this before, you want to go a little bit thicker than you normally would. You can see that the bones right here are a little bit thin. And the reason you want to go a little bit thicker is if you go very thin, especially resin, 3D printing can be very fragile. So you might have a little bit of an issue. Now for this one, it's symmetrical, right? So it might be a better idea to just do one bone first and then... Um, and then just duplicate it. This is going to look really wrong. Because <laughs> I'm going to add two spheres to that thing right there. So please, please, do not clip this. So we're going to have one sphere right there. For one of the bones. And then we're going to mirror, mirror wealth. <laughs> oh my god, so wrong. I swear this is not what you think it is. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna use Trim Dynamic, and I'm just gonna start adding this sort of like a beveled effect to the to the bones. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit asymmetrical. Asymmetry always looks uh, nice, and for a small piece like this one, since we're not gonna be doing like retopology and things like that, shouldn't have been that much of a problem. So let's reset this. Wait, did I miss the question? <laughs> Uh, keep baking, <laughs> grooming, I was looking into Mario for very high risk textures for, yeah, Mario is really good. Mario is uh, really, really good, but it's a little bit more for, I'm, I'm not going to say it's for like advanced, like textures or anything, it's just... It's a slightly different workflow. What, what, what Mari does, or at least when I learned Mari several years ago, the way it worked is you would bake the textures into the maps as you were like building them. And um, and the problem with that is that it's not as procedural as... Um, where's my tea? There we go. It's not as procedural as with uh, Substance where you can change things on the fly. So it works really well for like super big textures for like UDIM things and, and elements like that. But for um, for games where, where you're not like doing super high res stuff, you can get away with other kinds of elements. There we go, kind of like that. I cannot find, I, 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 I really want to do a hand painted tutorial because I love hand-painted stuff, but I think I'm going to do it just free on YouTube because I, I've never done, like, professional hand-painted things. It's always been, like, fanners and things like that or for, for myself. So I, I don't want to, like, like sell something that's not, like, industry-proven. And, uh, and that's why I think it's better if I just, like, make it for free on YouTube. So this one right here, we might be doing a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great one, Razer. Yeah, the substance cannot go higher than... than, uh, what's the worth? Than 4K. So now we're gonna rotate this 45 degrees. 
I'm gonna position it where I would imagine it to be, which is gonna be right here. Again, just gotta be very careful that we have enough space on this area right here so that when we push the key down, it's not actually like uh, pressing another key on the sides. I think this is gonna be just fine. And as you can see, the border here on the, on the key is also gonna give it a little bit of support to the whole thing. So this one, we're gonna mirror, mirror and wealth. And then we're gonna duplicate, center the pivot point, rotate this 180 degrees, and just position it down here. Uh, this one seems to be like coming, let's turn on symmetry. Then move the pivot point, there we go. So this one's, I know here they're very like symmetrical, but I kinda wanna make them slightly asymmetrical. There we go. And again, I, I need to make sure that they're overlapping quite a bit with the corners of the of the keycaps because that's going to give them extra support. And we're not going to have that much of an issue when, when 3D printing. What's the reason for not hand painting in substance? How much is 3D coat? Um, so the reason I don't uh, paint in substance is because the color picker works very weirdly uh, compared to other softwares. And the, the procedural approach to it means that you need to create a layer every time you need to paint a new color or stuff like that. So uh, again, from, um, from a practical point of view, I think it's a little bit easier if you do it inside of other softwares like 3D Code. 3D Code is really, really good. And 3D Code has a license that's a rent to own. So you start paying every month, I think it's like 40 or 35 euros or something. And, um, and then after 11 months, so after a year of paying for that license, you own the software forever, which I think it's amazing. A lot of softwares used to do that a couple of years ago. Now everyone's subscription-based, which sucks. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good software. 3D code. I'm actually gonna be like practicing some some stuff as well. But again, I, I, if I show you anything about that, it's probably gonna be it's probably gonna be on, on on YouTube just for free. So let's. This is gonna be like the chin. So let's create like the like the jawline and the chin line. And I know that the teeth are gonna be there. We'll, we'll add them to him just a second. And in this one, I actually do want to go like really heavy on the details. So we'll get there in just a second. Now, one thing very important here, you can see that the skull is kind of like smiling. So it might be a good idea to, to make it smile as well on the, on the shape of this element. Can I share an art station link here? Uh, yes, my friend, but I'm not going to be able to look at it right now. It's kind of, it's, it's going to break the, the flow of the stream a little bit, but feel free to, um, oh, there you go. Yeah. Sorry. I'm saying that's going to be blocked. So yeah, feel free to go into the discord channel and share it on the portfolio review. Uh, actually have we September portfolio review is open, right? I think September's portfolio review is open and we have portfolio review next week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's next week. So if you want me to review, we're going to have our portfolio review next week and, um, same time like today. And we're going to be going over it right here and in, in, in Twitch. So if you guys are watching and you guys are not following, make sure to follow. We want to get to our goal today, which is 360 followers. Let's see if we can get there. Now let's go for the teeth. I'm going to append a new cube. I'm going to move the cube forward. There you go. See, Tristam, thanks for the follow, man. Thank you very much. Let's go. Let's uh, dynamesh this cube, and and there we go. We got uh, Racer as well following. Thanks, man. See, I knew we had some extra followers right there. Asterix, thanks for the sub, man. We have special roles and special levels in our Discord for people that sub. So, so welcome and thank you for the for the sub. So I'm gonna make this very square, very cartoonish. Gonna be like a little bit of a of a contrast, and now let's position. I, I'm a little bit like it's a little bit funny that this guy has five teeth and one center one, but I think it's fun. So I'm probably gonna keep that one like that. So that's gonna be the first one right there. And now I'm gonna show you a trick. This one, oh, you guys are gonna. Okay, you guys are gonna like this one. So control alt and I'm gonna duplicate this one once and then another one three times. There we go. Let's get rid of uh, of the mask. 
I'm going to press all the groups to make sure that everyone has a single group. We're going to mirror, mirror, and then wealth. And this is going to give us like the five teeth right there. And then we can go to W, center the pivot point. Let's get rid of symmetry, center the pivot point, and then bring symmetry back. We can go to our little gizmo right here, and we have this thing called the bent arc. And this one allows me to bend these things in an arc, like this. So I can get the exact same like sort of curvature, like that. And then we can go to this side. And we can also bend the curvature like this. So as you can see, without having to like manually like move things around, I can get things to look very close to what I want. I'm still going to use my move brush, of course, with a symmetry turn on. And we're going to like adjust a couple of things. Very important. When you're, we're thinking about 3D printing, you want to avoid having all of this like empty areas. Like any pocket of air that you have on your sculpt could potentially cause some issues in 3D print. You can get some extra suction. You can get like unsupported areas. So it's very, very important that we try to, to avoid that one or that sort of like effect. There we go. Now I'm going to go back to the, to the skull. And I think it might be a good idea to add a little bit of a, of a border here on the teeth. Kind of like the root canal that we have with the... Again, we're going to add a little bit more detail. It, it's such a small piece that, that we can't really go for like super fine detail because it's not going to be seen. But we can exaggerate some of that and, uh, and get a nice effect. Let me go. I'm going to go here, say accept. So that gets applied. I'm going to push it, maybe scale it a little bit right there. And then what I can do here is I can literally just duplicate this, rotate them around. And then either with move brush or again with the other tool, just play around with this, guys. This ones are actually, it's a really weird position because they do seem to be kind of like flared out as well. So let's go like this. There we go. I'm not keeping up with the chat. <laughs> Let me see. Um, question for portfolios prop artists: What is best, creating a solo asset or creating a a, a mini scenery for the asset? Uh, that's a great question. So it depends on the asset. Like if you're just doing, I don't know, like a like a paint bucket or something like that, then doing a scene would be probably better because. Um, you can showcase more stuff that way. But if you're doing like a super complex asset, like a sci-fi capsule or like a super complex gun, then just like having it like that should be more than enough. So it, I, I guess it depends on the, on the complexity of the asset. Super complex assets might require or can be like left alone and, and that's it. But for, for more simple things, as, as I've mentioned before, like adding a, a little bit of a scene or a context. Context is the, is the word I was looking for. Having them in, in a context file might be a good idea. There we go. Let's definitely dynamesh this one with a higher resolution. Yeah, that looks good. I like this. Let's close the nose. a little bit of volume here if i okay give me a second help room uh ba -ba -ba -ba. oh that's the that's the lantern from racer okay let's take a look racer real quick just real quick this is good man this is really good Wow. Yeah, this is amazing, dude. Shit. Is this... Uh, how many 4K textures you got? Anchor points. Yeah, anchor points are great. We talked about them recently. Yeah, this is amazing, dude. This looks really, really freaking good. And yeah, so for instance, this asset, as a complex asset, it's perfectly, perfectly valid for, um, for, for it to be just standing alone. Like, that's perfectly fine. 
That's the level that you guys want to have for your portfolios if you can. However, yeah, it's it's probably Udems. It's probably Udems that he's using. Oh, okay, okay, I made a mistake. I, I, I thought you said that you did it. Okay, okay, so the, the original artist is uh, Andy, Andy Nelson. Okay, so yeah, um, how does he make it so that the textures are super crisp? If it's only one 4K texture, which I'm kind of, like, I'm not sure. Because, like, look at this, like, little detail right there. That looks super, super crisp, as you say. Like, the like the fidelity of the textures is super, super crisp. I'm not sure it's just one 4K texture. It could be, though. But I, I'm, I'm really questioning. It's probably, like, a couple of 4K textures, to be honest. Because, yeah, the, the, the level of detail is not something that you can achieve with just one, one 4K texture. Like you can take a look at the at the chest uh, video that I just released uh, yesterday or the day before, and uh, I used a 4K texture for that chest. Now, also keep in mind that um, depending on how much surface area an object has, a 4K texture can look way better on an object that has less surface area than an object that has a lot of surface area. The chest that I'm mentioning has a lot of little pieces and things, so the surface area gets like the textual density, as we call it, gets divided and. Um, um, and gets applied though, to a lot of different elements, so so it can modify how some things look. Um, well, we didn't have a specific direction. I was just following the concept. But what do you mean by stylized? Hand painted? We can make another version, like a hand painted version later. I think that would be cool. For now, I think I'm gonna finish it realistic for for the series. Well, we can do another series later. Where actually, that I think that could be a great. Uh, a great asset to do the hand painted uh, texture thing. Okay, let's just clean up some of the areas here. I like how this is looking, but it's it's looking like uh, like angry or something. So I'm, I want to I want to like modify the curvature a little bit here on the on the thing so that he looks a little bit happier. So I'm going to go to like this teeth and push them up. Same thing for this one. There we go. And then. That looks a little bit better. It's getting a little bit stretched right there. Got to be careful there. And I would imagine that the jawline kind of like continues on this section. So. From the side view or from the front view, we might not see it as much. It's always important to try to consider it. And since I'm doing it my style, I'm going to be a little bit more anatomically correct right there. There we go. I think the bones are a little bit too thick. So, I'm going to change them a little bit. I've been trying not to have a lot of floaty effects. Not super thin either, because that's gonna... Or that could potentially make it a little bit difficult. Same for this once. Cool. Now, of course, the hat is gonna be a super important part of this whole thing. Uh, let's see, another question here. Uh, I'm a big fan of Warcraft style of Fortnite. I also like Halo, but Halo's like a blend style. Yeah, Halo is a slightly different thing. Kings here says, by the way, what do you think about art styles as in detail, color, uh, shape, language, color preference, gesture? You explain things too well, it would be great with your opinion. Uh, what kind of art styles? Like, there's so many art styles out there. But personally, one of the things that makes a good piece for me is silhouette. Like I'm a huge fan of having strong silhouettes on my uh, on my elements, on my creations and everything. And then in regards to colors, I tend to pick more realistic things. I'm not a huge fan of like super like colorful, artful things. I'm a, a little bit more a grim sort of uh, guy in that sense. 
but um but i appreciate like for instance uh spider bears uh, recently like they did a freaking amazing job on the on the art style like they have a very very particular art style that looks incredible right on the movies okay let's add the hat so for the hat we're gonna add another sphere and what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna use my uh knife or let me do a quick save so knife brush and we're gonna cut half of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt it back a little bit so that we have uh, that we can see the bottom part of the of the hat, like where it um, finds the the skull, pretty much. Let's push it because this is the the base of the hat, and then we have the rim of the hat. And then for the rim, we're gonna add a cylinder. Let's make it thin. And this one, I do want to like push it a little bit more. I don't want this thing to be like super like high up because again, like imagine trying to press the key. We, we kind of want to have like a smooth profile on the key so that we're not uh, having that much of an issue. But that doesn't mean that we can't like distort a couple of things like here and there. There we go. Now I do want the... the um, the hat, <laughs> the hat trim to kind of like uh, go uh, closer or, or become smaller, kind of like a taper or like a bevel. So I'm going to turn on polyframe and we're going to go to C modeler. I'm not a huge fan of C modeler, to be honest, like it's not my favorite thing, but it's quite handy. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the edge loop complete. There we go. So that we leave this as a clean like polygon. That's it. And then we're gonna bevel. So probably like that. And same thing over here. There we go. That looks quite nice. And then to keep this sort of like sharp edge right here, we can either bevel or as I prefer, we're just gonna insert some more edge loops on the border. Kind of like traditional subdivision workflow. Let's see. Um, Seabrush UI gives me anxiety. Yeah, it did that to me when I first started as well. Okay, let's go with realistic to stylized, like blocky to Pokemon. Okay, okay. I will, we'll talk about that in just a second. Let me just see more questions. Realistic sci fi to me probably would be Mass Effect. Okay. I'd model the parts in Blender and Dynamic in Seabrush. Yeah, that's another option. I never said I didn't like I do like it. Okay. So um, I really like pixel art. Pixel art, I think, is very fun, and you can generate and create some very, very cool things. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of pixel art. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of uh, stylized things like Fortnite. I really like Fortnite, uh, like art style. I'm a huge fan of that, those kinds of characters. And then um, and Pokemon. Oh, I love the sprites. I'm a huge Pokemon fan, to be honest. I I have some uh, cards that I really like over here. I don't play the TCG, but I I, I really like Pokemon. It's a it's a fran franchise that I really like. But to be honest, I'm really disappointed with what they've done in the last couple of years, uh, because I have not enjoyed the games. Like the quality, the graphic quality of the games is just so bad, and it has no reason to be bad because they have all the money in the world. Like I would understand that from um, I don't know from a company like like an indie little company, right, or something like that, but these guys, they have all the money in the world and they're making, like, garbage things, so to me, it's really, really weird, so I'm, I am I didn't even finish uh, Pokemon, I, I got a Scarlet, did I got Scarlet? No, I got Violet, I got Pokemon Violet, and I finished the campaign, but I didn't go and, like, catch, catch them all, right? So the fact that they're not including all Pokemon, the fact that the quality of the environments is so bad, like, I, I'm really sad with what's done. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, because they released a statement not so long ago, and they mentioned that they're thinking about like slowing down their their releases to maybe focus a little bit more quality so i'm hoping that for the next switch for switch pro switch 2 or whatever it's going to be called uh they they do um like pick up the the slack and, and do something cool because it's just it's just sad that they have such a cool franchise and they're not doing they're not doing it any like honor right let's go to the skull i'm gonna lower the eyes so that we have a nice, like, 
overlap there with the hat. How's this looking? Not bad, right? Not freaking bad for what? Like an hour we've been working on it? No, not even an hour, like 34 minutes. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I, I read the report, Tristan, about uh, the Switch 2 coming up uh, or someone like looking at it and uh, and they mentioned that it's um, it's going to have a, a good amount of power, like a 1050 Ti something. So, so I'm hoping it's it's true. Like I know Nintendo games have never been like uh, graphic powerhouses, but there's a, a limit, right? Like th there should be some sort of like uh, quality bars like, hey, for instance, I am a huge fan of Cineblade Chronicles, and I think even though it does look outdated or, or kind of like old in certain areas, it still looks way better than Pokemon. So how is it that a team with half or, or less than half of the resources that the Pokemon company can like really squish as much information from um, from the Switch and, and get something like uh, like Cineblade or like uh, Tears of the Kingdom, right? And wh why can't they do that for Pokemon? It's just ridiculous. But uh, hey, that's uh, capitalism and corporation for you. <laughs> Nintendo stopped chasing the powerhouse when the Wii PS3 360 era started, and it has been very yeah. And I actually think that that's it was like the smartest choice because I don't think quality is really important in a game. Like I think one of the games that I spent the most time on was not even like a, like a 3D game. So so graphics are cool, right? Like it's always very nice to see super advanced graphics and stuff. But they're not the most important thing. Gameplay, music, story, I, I would give that more, more importance. We actually follow a very similar approach to Nintendo on our own studio. Right now we're working on a very cool project that I cannot say absolutely anything about, but just, just a very cool VR project. And, um, and, and we know that VR has some quality limitations. Like we cannot have ray tracing, we cannot have subsurface scattering, we cannot have, uh, we can even have like alpha maps and stuff like that. So we don't have transparency. So there's a lot of technical limitations. And what we need to do is we need to find ways to tell a very compelling story without having to depend on amazing graphics. Because how many games have we seen that have amazing graphics but suck as a game or as a story? There's a lot of them. So I would rather have a, a game that does not look as good but is just amazing to play. Starfield is amazing to me. I haven't played Final Fantasy yet. Diablo, Diablo, 2, Diablo 4 was good. Um, I, I played it with my brother and my brother-in-law, but we got a little bit like turned off by the amount of grind that it required. I felt like it were, they were not respecting the player's time as much, and it felt like like very like way too grindy. Like I know Diablo is supposed to be a grindy game, but that one felt a little bit too much grindy. Death Stranding 2. Death Stranding... I, I didn't play Death Stranding. I, I thought the concept was a little bit weird, to be honest. But I know it's a good game. And that's the that's the amazing thing about beta games, I think. Like, there's so many beta games out there that you can pretty much pick and choose whatever you want. And uh, and uh, as long as you, as you enjoy it, then that's cool. Okay, let's start adding a little bit more realistic detail. So I'm just going to start pushing certain elements here. Should we add, like, a... Uh, I have this thing... Let me know, guys. You guys are gonna vote. Actually, can, can we have a, a, a poll, Sarn? Let's have a poll about, should we add... Where's the thing that I did? I always forget what the name of that, like, element is. It's the wheel of a boat. Where is it? Or was it... I think it was a, a short, so... It should be here in images. This one. Ship helm. I have this model ready. We could add it on the back of this call. Should we? Should we add the helm or not? That's the next poll right now. I think it could add a little bit of uh, like visual interest. Now I'm going to go to the hat right here. And I'm going to use my knife brush. Let's do another quick save real quick. And I'm going to... Like... Oh, we need to dynamish. Okay. Let's increase the resolution. I'm going to keep polish on for that one. So we can keep a very crisp edge. And one of the things I want to do is I want to remove... Uh, probably like... Actually, let's do it right there. We probably need to clean a lot of other stuff like this sphere. I don't even know what that sphere is. That's the hat. So let's clean that as well. This call. And then this thing. There we go. 
I mean, it doesn't matter if we have some stuff over there, um, but it helps to... It, it removes a little bit of volume, so the 3D print is going to be a little bit cheaper. And uh, if we add the helm, we're going to be able to, to do it. So the poll is up, guys. Help me decide. Should we add uh, this thing right here uh, uh, as the background? Like, there's this circle right here. We can use this model. I have it in Maya, and I can bring it and, um, and, uh, and just add it. Or should we keep it like this? You tell me. It says... Oh, there you go. That's way better. Oh, dude, Tristram. I, I did not see that comment, dude. My brother and me, we're so... Fuck, like so fucking big fans of Monster Hunter. He he's even a bigger fan than I am. He has like the tattoo. He's a hammer bro, so he has the hammer logo on his uh, shoulder. Looks freaking cool. I'm a, I'm a charge blade user. We've been playing since Monster Hunter Four on the 3DS, and I think we've easily done like 500, 700 hours on Monster Hunter Rise on the PC. We're not playing anymore because we just finished the freaking game. Uh, but yeah, like we can't wait to the next one because uh, that's like a like a brother time where we just like get some beers, get our computers, and we just like have fun destroying freaking monsters everywhere. That's a, it's such an amazing game. And I know not a lot of people like the, the, the gameplay loop, but me and him, we, we freaking love it. It's just so good. Such a good game. Okay, so uh, the poll is about to end, or did it end? Yes! Okay, we're gonna add it. Cool. We are gonna add it. Give me just one second. I'm just gonna add a little bit more detail here on the mouth. Now, for 3D print, this is something that I've mentioned before, you want to go a little bit deeper or a little bit heavier than you might think you need to go because you lose quite a bit of detail on the 3D print. Not all 3D printers. If you're using one of the most advanced ones, then you might be fine. But usually, uh, like commercial 3D printers like the Elegoo Mars, not the pro version, just the normal version, you will lose a little bit of, um, of, of uh, detail because light bleeds a little bit. So you always want to like push things a little bit more than you than you might think. I'm gonna use my move, uh, move topological. BMT, there we go. Just gonna fix the teeth right here a little bit. Move topological is a great brush because it allows you to, to just keep things very clean. And as you can see, I'm trying to eliminate all of the pockets of, uh, of things that we might have right there. There we go. Kind of want to add a little bit more support here on the lower section of the jaw. SLS has... Yeah, the, yeah, like the... I have an Elogo Mars uh, 3, and uh, they have great detail. But even then, especially with small pieces, I see that in miniatures. I, I print a lot of stuff for my D&D games. Um, you do lose quite a bit of detail. So that's why I'm saying that you, you do need to go a little bit more... Like, just a little bit stronger than you would normally do it. Yeah, there's already 3D printers that do colors. Um, the quality, because you use this sort of like sand and pigments and things like that. The quality that I've seen, it's not amazing. I, I, like, I don't love it, but um, it's, a, it's a good step. And yes, eventually we're going to have that. Like, I, I saw recently a 3D printer, a filament 3D printer, that stops with one. Like, you can have several spools with different colors, and then it smartly or automatically changes from spool to spool depending on what part of the character they're doing and they like literally dispose of the of the filament and then they start using the new one it's really interesting really really interesting i don't have a filament 3d printer maybe if we if we keep growing and uh and we get some nice sales on our courses i'll be able to afford another a new one i, I had a very old one but it's very slow so so that's why i don't use it Gaming Instincts! Hey, Tristram! This is your man. Oh, there you go! Welcome, Tristram! Thank you, thank you for the... for the follow. Awesome. What is the difference between a 3D model for games and 3D models for VR games? In VR games, you need to optimize even more. There you go! Thanks for the... for the follow! For the follow and for the sub! Nice, nice, thank you, man. Uh, yeah, so for games, you or, or at least for VR, one of the things that we've noticed is that if you try to do the traditional PPR like technique, which is a normal map, diffuse, 
uh, specular and roughness or metallic and roughness it's a lot of maps so we, we've been doing a lot of hand painted stuff or just bake everything down into a single texture because unfortunately at least a standalone brs like the oculus quest which is the one that we use it's pretty much like having a cell phone so it's like a mobile game that's the that's the amount of quality that you can have for your for your projects if you're doing games like uh, half-life uh, alex where you have access to a computer and the htc5 then that's a different story like you can do other stuff right there you can do like traditional game things because you're pretty much playing from uh from a computer right so uh for vr development we, we've been using a lot of uh, tricks and, and and like shortcuts and cheats pretty much to to get as much uh, detail and optimization as, as we can okay let's do the trim dynamic it's just like something happened there but it kind of looks like a like an interesting effect so i'm gonna break symmetry and i'm gonna start adding some damage to this bones I'm not seeing my letter. Like, there's some light, like, shining on my keyboard, and I can't see my keys. Let's see. Um, I'm waiting for printers to get so big that you can go and print a 13-foot Godzilla. <laughs> and then put AI into it. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's gonna happen eventually. Like, I, I just recently saw a, a 3D printer. I think the volume of the 3D print was, like, 1.2 meters. Like, cubic meters. It's just ridiculous. It looked amazing. It must be expensive as hell, but uh, it looked very, very cool. <laughs> that that it will be definitely. So, for instance, here I'm gonna exaggerate the eyebrow a little bit more because, again, if we 3D print this, the the size at which this is gonna be 3D printed, you're barely gonna notice it. I think I want to go to the to the straw hat and add a little bit of a of a detail here, kind of like a cut. Does Luffy have a cut on his uh, on his hat? Probably, right? Who who here has seen like the whole One Piece thing, like the one thousand? I don't know how many episodes. Has anyone done that? Here in chat. How to achieve better IOR at cycles and Fresnel like Arnold? That's a great question. I'm not sure. But I can look into it. I haven't done a lot of glass with Blender, to be honest. So that's probably something I need to, to learn. There's a good chance Capcom announces the next mainline Monster Hunter at TGS this September, Tokyo Game Show. Next year, Monster Hunter is going to be 20 years old. It will make sense for them to release the next level for... Yeah, and uh, I've seen rumors that they're going to be doing a Monster Hunter World 2, which I think would be cool, because I know that the mainline and, like, the portable versions can be a little bit different. Like, Monster Hunter Rise, I loved it. I, I think it was a great game, but it was very anime-ish and very, like, uh, stylized, right? Like, very crazy looking i would like a, a middle ground of uh, like monster hunter world and monster hunter rice because i did think that monster hunter world were a little bit went a little bit too realistic and the armors and the weapons didn't look as cool to be honest so so if they could like compromise and get in between that would be great they have two teams the mobile and the main team yeah yeah daniel Thank you, man, for being here on the stream. Yes, um, it's going to be on YouTube, and the BOD is also going to be available here in Twitch later on. Thank you again, my friend. We'll see you. We'll see you on the on the Discord. By the way, if you guys are watching and you're not in the Discord, we'll share the link in just a second. Let's go over here. A little bit of detail. Like, I'm adding this or like grungy effects to the bone because later on when, when i 3d print this and i paint it those are like high points and low points that i'm going to be able to use a technique called the dry brushing and the washes which is a very simple well not not super simple but quite simple technique to um to clean things up oh we said we were going to bring the this thing right the the helm let's import it so import uh, Avliel, and then where is it? Assets. Should be around here. Where did 
did I leave that? Data? No, I don't usually leave it in data. Chess, coins, displacement, kindred, cobalt, magic worm. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna have to open the Maya file. Let's go. Let's say... Uh, I'm so sad I'm not gonna be able to watch more live streams. The school is starting. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I know. I know, and uh, it's it's unfortunate because I know that at least here in, in, in this part of the of the world, it's it's early right now. It's uh, almost 12 a.m. and most people are at school. But don't worry, the live streams are gonna be available in YouTube, and maybe we'll have some late night streams or live streams later on. So we'll we'll, we'll have to see how we can manage that. Uh, gaming says, what's your opinion on AI? I've spoke to Midjourney CEO. They hold a community Q&A in the Discord where you can ask questions in voice or in chat. I spoke to him about three stuff. They say text to 3D is coming, but it will be a very long while. Oh, it's definitely coming. It's already there. Like NVIDIA showed something very, very recently. But here's the thing. It, it's just going to make the initial steps of the 3D process faster and easier. So let's say you need to model, I don't know a concrete barrier for a street or something instead of having to do the base mesh you just do that and they're going to give you a nice thing but you're still going to have to clean it up you're still going to have to add more details or change it depending on what the art direction says you're still going to have to create uvs you're still going to have to texture with pbr workflow so it's it, it's still going to be it, it's going to be something that's going to accelerate certain things but um but that doesn't mean that that's uh it's going to kill 3d like not at all like, there's still so many other areas in 3D world, like effects and textures and animation. There's some, already some animation, AI animation tools that are really good. But even those, you still need to bring the animation into Maya and clean it up. So the job as the artist is probably going to be the artistic part. Like, how do you take something that's done by a computer that's just like the basic block and polish it to make it amazing, right? Some people really like that initial stage. And for those people, then I am very sad. I am one of those people. I really like the initial blocking stages of things. However, we need to understand that the technology is advancing and there's like not much we can do about it. So, so it's better to adapt and use technology as a tool and, and keep creating amazing things than like being like, oh, I hate technology. I, like that. It's just, it's not going to work, right? It doesn't, it doesn't solve anything. I'm gonna export this to the to the desktop and let's bring it here append and we append a sphere it can be anything i'm just gonna append the sphere import and we import the helm oh my god why is it not centered oh because it was animated okay so let's go there the good thing is that it's um the object is symmetrical, so it should be fairly easy to... There we go. I'm a little bit worried about the little, like, things right there. Because they might be pushing... Like, they might be, like, clicking other elements. I'm also gonna grab the key and just, like, push it back a little bit so we get a little bit more space. So that thing's gonna be like half there. That kind of looks okay. Another thing that we can do is just like make this thing a little bit bigger and then remove the little like knobs. I'm not sure. Now that I see it, I'm not convinced. I think it looks a little bit too noisy. What do you guys think? Gaming says, dude, I love AI. I am uh, excited to see where it goes, and I believe it would make the game development so much easier. It's just another awesome tool like Photoshop was for its time. Yeah, and I mean, we, we can kind of see it right now with, with how movies are going. You know, you guys know in the United States, we got the um, the writer's strike and things like that. So I think one thing that's, that AI is going to help, like, do or achieve, it's just going to democratize the creation things and now you no longer need to have like a super huge infrastructure to create amazing things and you're going to be able to tell stories and create products um in a in a faster and like nicer way i'm not sure about that guys i think i think we're not going to use the the helm i don't like it i feel like it makes the whole thing way too busy so let's keep it like this and for this thing actually i kind of want to I'm going to go back before I cut it, because I do want to have that that's easier to print. And then what we can do is I am going to use the knife brush, but a 
this point. Did it not work? Oh, it's not frozen. Let's polish that image. Okay, so right there we're gonna cut. So yeah, there's gonna be an extra bar right there. It's not gonna affect the, the key or anything. And that's gonna make it a lot easier to, to 3D print. Tripler are making more time are, are taking more time to develop than scammer mortgage right now. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and, and here's the thing, uh, you guys have seen it, like, they're taking more time to develop, they're taking more money, and it's not necessarily making better games, right? Like, um, we see that, I think, like, I, I like Call of Duty, but we see that, like, they're not really innovating or creating anything new, it's just the same thing pretty much every year. So, so it's the, the sort of stuff that... You, you need to wonder, right? Like, is it really worth it to spend years and years working on something that's not even revolutionary? I don't know. I, I've always felt like indie stuff is has more artistic value because it it it, it runs it, it takes risks. And I know it's not easy to make it as an indie artist because there's other like things that you need to worry about. But um, that's why I decided to start my own studio and everything because. We wanted to, to be in control of the creative decisions. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, there's some games that have a huge, huge budget, and they are a success, and, and that's great. Like, uh, like Baldur's Gate, right, right now, uh, which is uh, quite big. Like, that's amazing. But how many do we know that are not amazing? It spent a lot of money, and they're like, oh, God. Like, like Overwatch 2, right? Like, the whole fiasco with the PBI, PBE thing is like, dude, you had an amazing IP and, and you blew it. So, that's the, that's the sad thing. I kind of like it. I think, I think we're ready. What do you guys think? Is it Flexi Cubes? Yeah, yeah, Blizzard's not the same anymore, unfortunately. It's just, it's a, it's a shame. I mean, they're still doing from the art side of things. I think they're they've never dropped the dropped the the ball. Like they've always done amazing, amazing art things, cinematics, character design, environments. Like it, it's just gorgeous everything they do. So the artists in general, I think, have have been uh, amazing throughout these years. But um, everything else, it's yeah, it's just a shell of its, of its former self, as they say. What would you do different if you can go back in time and relearn 3D? I would learn more about other parts of the 3D. When I just when I started as a 3D artist, I was like dead focused on I want to be a character artist, I want to be a character artist, and everything I thought about and everything I learned about was character art. Now, with my own little studio here, I realized that it might have been smarter if I had learned other things, such as effects. Like, I, I suck at effects, that's the next thing that I need to learn. Um, even a little bit of like illustration concept, but like, because uh, now my role is more of a generalist. Even though I do characters, uh, I'm more of a generalist. So it might have been a lot more, a smarter use of my time to learn more about other parts of the pipeline than just focus so much on on characters. So that's what I would probably change. Yeah. They they are definitely or they definitely feel that way, Pepper with Duck. I, I do think that they are soulless. I do think they have cool ideas. I think I think again as a tool, they're a really powerful tool because you can just throw in like Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion or whatever. And at least that's what I've been doing for my like DD campaigns. I just throw in the idea of a character, and then if I see something, I work from there. So I use that as a, as a launching point. To, to start developing something that looks a little bit more interesting. So as long as you don't just use whatever it's thrown at you first and you refine it and, and modify it, I think I think that's a good way to to make you good use of the tool. Yeah, Bioware is having and, and, and you know the problem with those companies I think is that they they think that they have the the key to always succeed. And they, they're, it's just capitalism, guys. Like, they, they always want, like, higher and higher margins and higher and higher profits. And they don't respect the craft or the art anymore. They want things to be rushed out. They overwork artists, crunch time. And, like, it's just horrible. And it's an unfortunate, like, side of our industry that uh, a lot of people go or do that kind of stuff. A lot of corporates 
they don't see that for things to be good things, they need to spend time on them. They just want to look at the next check, right? So that's horrible. Okay, cool. So I think I think that's it. I don't know what else to add, to be honest. Any any uh, One Piece fans that, uh, that want to give some feedback to this piece? Is it good? Would you like to have it on your keyboard? Should we have like a circle back there? Like a scar? I don't know. Like I'm thinking like a scar right here or something. More Cthulhu stuff? Yeah, yeah. We'll do more Cthulhu. There's a, there's a game, a board game that I've been having, like I've had on my head for a long time. And it's Cthulhu theme. I might I might do something like that soon. It's a it's a it's a board game I want to create and uh, play test and stuff. I, I don't have high hopes of it being like published or anything, but it's just like I I want to be able to say hey I I made my own board game right, and I want to sculpt some of the things that I'm gonna need 3D print them and use like a prototype or something. Will you show us the, all the process with the 3D printing? Yes yes we're about to do that. So, uh, I'm just checking the time. We still have one hour, so we're probably going to be finishing the 3D setup or the 3D print setup, like, super fast. And then, I think it might be a good idea to to show you guys how to do a little bit of, like, hand painting thing for, for this thing. For just a sculpt, like, without the without this element right here. Have, like, a like a banner or something. So, here's what we're going to do for 3D printing. This is the, the next stage, the 3D printing stage. Yes, I thought about that, uh, Razer. I, I, thank you, thank you for reminding me because I did thought about that, and 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 now you just reminded. Me. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn on live boolean. Just make sure that we're not like creating any weird thing right there. Perfect. I'm gonna turn on live boolean, and I'm gonna go to the boolean option right here, and just say make boolean mesh. And what this will do is it will like merge everything into a single element. And now, since everything is a single element, I'm gonna be able to use an append. A cylinder and do exactly what Racer just told us, which is to to make this thing um, to make this thing go through the ice. Thank you, Pepper. See you on the next one, man. So we're gonna have this one right here. And the only important thing in this thing is we need to make sure that we're not like actually creating any obstruction with the with the um, handles there. So let me scale this. Uh, no, I don't think that's going to be an issue, to be honest. Like, uh, as long as we're not touching the cross thing, which is where the switch actually goes in, we should be fine. But if we want to be even safer, I'm just going to keep this, like, way up here, like that. So, yeah, let's do a mirror and wealth, and we're gonna do this as negative booleans. And as you can see, that thing allows me to see through the whole thing. Oh, I'm a little bit worried about the thinness right there. So the cool thing is, since this is light boolean, I might be able to... There we go, that looks a little bit better, like that should give me a little bit more like mass and that should allow light to go to go through mask the cut yeah we could mask the cut but that that's fine like uh, again i think this is like this should be fine this should work fine yeah it shouldn't be that much of a problem to be honest okay so let's make this a boolean mesh again and this new boolean mesh, one of the things that I do want to do is I want to... I'm kind of worried about that. Where, where that. What's that thing coming from? It's the hat, right? I think that's the hat. Actually, let me go back here. Let's append a cube. And let's use this cube to, to clean that shape a little bit. Because I am a little bit concerned about that weird shape that we have right there. I'm gonna rotate this. Kinda wanna get rid of that angle. There we go. Now let's push this in. Yeah, that's that's better. So that, that little hole right there should be 
should be fine. Cool. So let's uh, mirror and weld as well. And that should be good. Should be enough support right there. Okay. So like, let's make this a Boolean mesh again. And this is it. So now I just want to use my trim dynamic. Well, we need to dynamesh this at a high resolution. Very important. It's going to blend everything a little bit as well, which is fine. And now that we have that. Actually, let me. I'm going to go quite high on the resolution here. Hopefully it doesn't crash. We have saved. Don't worry. We have saved. Just wait for this to there we go so whoa that that was a little bit too much let's go 600. that was like nine million polygons. there we go so now oh it's not symmetrical what the hell okay that's fine for whatever reason this thing is not symmetrical it's gonna very very like softly bevel a little bit of the corners right there and the reason I want to bevel the corners is 90 degree edges can be a little bit tricky to, to 3D print. So it's it's better if you can like just bevel them a little bit. It also looks a little bit more organic, which I think like follows nicely with this uh, with this project. Also, very importantly, we do want to like soften up the insides, the like bands from the cylinder. There we go. So now we have a single mesh. It's a watertight mesh. I'm going to show you a little trick here just to check that we don't have any air pockets. This is very important for uh, for 3D printing. So I'm going to go here and add a new uh, cube. And then I'm going to make this cube bigger. Bigger. And we're going to bring it to the front. And this cube is going to be like uh, removing. And if we start going kind of like a, like a CT scan like this. As you can see right there, we're going to be able to notice if there's any pockets. So there's a little bit of a pocket right there. Can you see it? Like right there. Right there. So we need to solve that one. And then... Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So we just have a little bit of a pocket there on the back side of the teeth. Like right around there. Should be fairly easy to, to solve. Let's... Go here, I'm just going to go my inflate brush, B, I, N, and we're going to inflate the inner side of the teeth right there, and we dynamish. And by doing that, we should be able to remove the air pocket. There we go. So now it's like, like barely there. It's still a little bit there, but it's fine. Like that's, that's not going to be an issue. So this right here is pretty much like a like a way in which we can see whether our 3D print is going to work nicely. As you can see, everything seems to be working fine. So I'm going to uh, clone this to have another version right here. And once we have this version, we need to decimate it. So I'm going to go to C plugin. Actually, wait a second. It's not that bad. No, this is not the mix one. Where is it? This one? Oh, I cloned. Sorry, I cloned the wrong thing. There we go. This one. So we clone this one. There we go. 2.3 million. That's a little bit too much. So I'm going to decimation master and let's bring it down to 250k. That should be a good amount. Let's see. Looks menacing with a cutter. Yeah, it's going to look very, very cool, I think. Uh, if you have an RGB keyboard, uh, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to look nice. Let's see. What issues do the pockets cause when 3D printing? They can cause um, uh, like suction, vacuum suction. And this piece, it's not really that big of an issue. But if you have a big piece and you have a big suction point, when it is trying to, to bring it up from the plate, it can generate a lot of tension. And then it gets ripped from the plate and it just gets stuck on the, on the, on the film down. And you, like, it, it just like, makes the whole like, print fail. So ideally, you don't want that to happen. So 250k, that's perfect. We're going to export this. Very important. We're going to export this as an STL. 
Then I'm going to export this on the desktop, hit save and hit OK. And the most important thing now are the supports. So let me bring this to the side. And the software that I use is called Cheetobox. This is the one that comes with uh, the Elegoo uh, system. So this is the one that we are going to be using. There we go. So we're going to um, open this one right here. And what I want to see is I just want to make sure that this looks the size and it does. It does look like the proper size. So, so that's great. Nice like volume. And as you can see, this is the detail that we're going to be printing. So that's why I was not too concerned about like super small details because it's such a small key that you're barely going to see it. So when 3D printing, let's go to the support area right here. Actually, when 3D printing, we need to decide how we're going to 3D print to get the most quality. And usually the advice is to 3D print this as like a 45 degree angle, roughly like this. And the reason is the, the highest resolution usually that you have on your 3D printer is on the C axis. So if we leave this thing like this flat to the bed, what's going to happen is we're going to have very few layers on the skull itself. And if we do this like this, we're going to have more layers on the skull and therefore a little bit more detail. So this is a cheat box. It's uh, it's the slicer that comes with um, what's the word with um, the Elegoo Mars. Another thing here is I want to I want to make sure that this thing kind of like supports itself. So by doing it this way, by by rotating a 45 degree angle, like the hat, for instance, it's going to support itself and everything's just going to build on top of each other. So we're not going to need as many supports. So if we go over here and we go to the lower section, the way supports work is as you start building things up like this, there's going to be a very thin element right here. And this is where we need to start supporting things. I am of the thought that it's better to have over supported an over supported print that does not fail than it is to go for a simple print that's going to fail. So I'm going to go with light supports here and I'm pretty much going to support the whole band. I'm going to try to support it from the side so that we don't have as many like elements on the on the front border. But if we have some issues on the front border, we can just sand them out later. So light support for a small piece like this should be more than enough. I know, again, some people like calculate and calibrate everything to have like a like an amazing, super clean thing. Again, I, I tend to be I just like to play it safe. So this thing is going to keep moving up. For instance, here, I'm going to add two medium supports on the inside and on all of the border right here because it's going to be a slightly heavier border. So again, I would rather have some heavy supports just to make sure that this thing does not fail. As we keep going here, we got this piece. For this piece, I am going to go for light supports because it's a very important piece and I don't want to deform it too much when I rip up or rip out the supports. So if I get some damage there, that's fine. Let's do one more here. And again, I know some of you guys who do 3D printing are like, this is way too much. I prefer it this way. <laughs> I prefer it this way because it's less cleanup. It's less uh, like worrying. It's just less hassle, in my opinion. So this keeps going. Now that we have some medium supports, we can keep going with just small supports. I'm just going to add small supports all around the, the border here. As you can see, creating a nice little cage. It's going to make sure to, to hold everything together properly. There we go. We might add just a couple more here. If we see red areas, red areas are areas that have no supports, like right there. So that's an area that you probably do want to support just to be safe. Same for this one right here. So you can see there's a point where that island gets created right around there. That's a lot of tension for that area. So again, it's just better to be safe than sorry. Do you cut the supports after? Yes. So the way this works is you print the thing and then you remove all of the excess uh, resin and then you remove the supports and then you cure the whole thing. If you remove the, supu the supports after curing, they get hardened. So you might chip away from the piece. So ideally, you remove them before uh, the final curing process because you do need to do a final curing process at some point. Here we go. So we got just very simple ones right there. Super simple supports. This supports, I usually like to support the supports. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but when you have a very fragile support like this, it can like uh, like fail. 
So I'll rather just support the support to make sure that we don't have any issues. This keeps going. There you go. You can see a couple more like floating islands right there. So that's another support that we need to add. And we can pushing this. The As you can see, the mandible right there, it, it's pretty much like building on top of itself. So we don't need too many supports. But again, just to be safe, I'm going to add just a couple of supports right there. Keeps going. Everything builds on top of itself. It's great. And then here we have a couple of new little islands right there. Look at that. So that those floating islands, those are the problem. If you do not support those islands, that's where um, where the whole thing can like fail and crash. Well, not the whole thing. At that point, it's only this part that would fail. But again, you, you, you want a, a clean print, right? So, so it's better to just have it. And that's it. Everything else, as you can see right here, just keeps sprinting on top of itself. And there we go. So if we slice, we're going to get the amount of um, resin that we're going to be using. As you can see, we're going to be using three grams of resin, three milliliters of resin. It's nothing. The cost, as you can see right here, is less than 10 cents of a dollar, uh, considering that the bottle costs like uh, like $50. So it's, it's just like super, super cheap. So uh, one of the other things that I really like about 3D printing is that it prints per layer. So it's the same thing in speed to print, like, let's say three of them than it is to print one. So it's going to take the exact same amount of time. The only thing that's going to increase is the amount of resin that you use. So I'm going to print three of them, one for me, one for my brother, and one for a friend that I have on the studio as well. Uh, and by the way, this STL is going to be available on our store. Um, so if you guys have your own 3D printer, you want to 3D print it, it's going to be, it's going to be right there in, in a couple of days. So let's slice. And once we slice, we just check here real quick to make sure that everything's printing nicely. Seems like it is. That's a really clean print right there. I'd like to change my leaf speed to 50. So that it leaves a little bit like a, a slower. It does make the, the print a slower, a little bit slower. But it, it also reduces the amount of suction. And uh, it, for me, it works to make sure that my print will print. So I'm going to save this. Desktop, and let's call this one piece. There we go. And that's it. That's the that's the 3D like printing process, pretty much. Like that's what we would need to do to to 3D print the whole thing. And by doing that, we we just ensure that this thing is just gonna work nicely. So where's the best place to buy resin in mexico caprasus is asking i buy it through amazon because if you try to import it you get into some issues with uh, customs so it's better to just buy it directly from amazon uh mercado libre also good idea good prices sometimes so those are the two places that i normally go for okay so that's it man or my friends with that, we are pretty much done with our one piece uh, 3D print, but we still have some time. So I thought it might be a good idea to to talk a little bit about like how we can prepare this into something slightly different. So if we go back here to the Cherry MX and we just hide the Cherry MX, like I think this is a really cool like banner or something that we can use. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm, make, I'm gonna make this a Boolean mesh as well. Uh, where is it? There we go. And then I'm going to Dynamesh with a high resolution. And I'm going to use my cut brush or my cut element to cut right here. Probably a little bit more just to make sure that we have a completely flat like thing. There we go. Dynamesh again. And this little thing right here can be converted into an asset that we can use to... Um, like have it as an emblem on a game like imagine you're walking into like a pirate uh, like a bar or something or like a dock and there's this thing on a wooden board saying here's the the luffy crew or whatever so that's the that's the kind of stuff that we can do will you ever move to usa are you asking me gaming or sorry <laughs> Me, I don't think so. I I was uh, I I went to Noman in Los Angeles back in from 2013 to 2016, and um, we, we've talked about this, Art and I, about uh, like our goals as, as artists, right? And everyone has a different goal. So to me, doing exactly what I am doing right now, having my own small studio, teaching, doing cool stuff, 
like I'm living my life, man. I'm, I'm so happy with how, what I can do and, and the opportunities that I have right now. I know some people are looking for their credits on a big AAA game or a big movie. And uh, like props to anyone who wants to do that. That's not the life that I want to go with. Like that's not the life I want to live. So unless I got like a super tremendous offer, uh, I'm probably not going to be like going anywhere because um, I value what I have right here. Right. So I, I really like what I have right here. Okay, so for this one, I think one of the things that we can do is we can use Siri Measure because it's a prop that's not going to deform. It's a, it's a prop that's going to be pretty much just a static prop. So Siri Measure can work perfectly fine. Even even like this, actually. How about showing you guys how to do like Nanite and stuff like that? Because we could like definitely paint on top of this thing just as is. But let's try doing a, a Siri measure first. So I'm gonna go sub tool and I'm gonna append a new, or sorry, I'm just gonna duplicate this thing. And then this new thing, I'm just gonna go uh, Siri mesh, geometry, Siri mesh and Siri mesh. Yeah, so so that's the thing. Like uh, I, I love 3D, I love games, I love everything. And uh, yes, I'm originally here from Mexico, born and raised. And um, but there's so much, so many other things to life, right? And uh, I know some people take 3D very seriously and their whole lives, like, literally run around 3D. And if that's what you want to do for your life, that's great. Like, we're free to do whatever we want, and, and that's the beauty of it, right? But in my case, I 3D is just my work. I, I love my work. I love what I do. But there's other things I want to do in life and other, like, hobbies that I want to explore. So, so yeah, that's that's why I made the decision. Oh, nice, nice. I had a really good friend, uh, two friends actually, one, she was from Russia, and uh, he was from Ukraine. Uh, they were peers of mine when I was at Noman. Super cool dudes. Okay, so this is good. This is a, a nice, relatively nice topology. It's not great, like we can definitely optimize this more, but for the for the things that I want to show you, I think this is, this is really good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to smooth this out one, two, three times with Control D. And then turn off back this one, and I'm just gonna project things again. So I'm gonna go to project and project all. What it should, it should allow me to catch all of the detail or more of the detail on the element, as you can see right here. And now, if I go to the lowest of the vision mesh, which is this one right here, it should look a little bit closer to what we're looking for. So this mesh right here, as you're seeing it, I'm gonna export. I'm gonna export this as an FBX. This is gonna be called our low. It's called low. And then I'm gonna um, go to the highest of the vision level. 720 is not that many polygons, so I'm just gonna export it as is. I'm not gonna decimate. And this is gonna be skull high. There we go. And now we're gonna open Maya. Well. I want to learn Russian. I was telling Sarn that I, I really need to learn Russian, but uh, it's, a, it's a difficult language. And if you guys are not following and you've been watching for a while, well, help us get to our goal. We're really close to our 360 followers and uh, your follow or your subscription could really help. So thank you very much for being here, guys. We still got like uh, 40 more minutes here on our stream. I need to get some water. Give me just one second. One second, one second. Okay, let's go. So file, import, and we're gonna import here in desktop. We're gonna import only the low poly. Ah, it's off center. That's weird that it's off center, but that's fine. So here's a very quick, like, it's, it's a stupidly, like, ugly um, UV that we're gonna be doing, but it's... Uh, it should work. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into object mode. Let's assign here our normal Lamber material. Let's make it a little bit darker. There we go. And on the front view, I'm going to do, well, first I'm going to do a, a UB camera base projection just to get some base. I'm going to go to the front view. I'm going to grab all of the lower faces, like the caps right here. All of the lower faces uh, right around there. There we go. 
and I'm going to do a UV planar mapping from the Z axis, from top to bottom. Hit apply. And as you can see, that generates a cut across the whole thing, which is very similar to what we would, we would normally do for a character like this. And now that we have the cut, it's going to be a lot easier to go into our 3D cut and, uh, and sew UV tool and split a couple of things like the bones right here. So I'm going to split the bones, probably going to split the hat. Uh, probably a little bit closer to the hat. That one right there. No, actually, that's way too far away from the hat. So... That one. No. That one. No. I guess it's going to have to be that one. Okay. So it's going to be the hat. And we split the other bones right here. There we go. This one and this one. And the only reason why I'm doing this split is to... It's a little bit concerning. It's not the end of the world, but it's just a little bit weird to have that many polygons up there. Uh, it might be a good idea, actually, to to cut the eyes as well. And maybe even the nose. That's just going to help the whole thing relax a little bit better. So we're going to do a Control u to unfold. And then a Control l to lay them out. And as you can see, we got a decent UV right here. So now we grab uh, this thing file. Actually, let me I, I do want to center it. So I'm going to I'm going to bring in the high poly as well. Should be. Oh, wait, give me a second. Let's change the name of this thing to low. Remember that Maya doesn't like when two objects are named the same. So that's what happened there. It was trying to. Let's bring this one right there. Let's go to the top view. I just want to make sure this thing is as aligned as possible. Especially for the skull. Because if we do some hand-painted things and we don't have symmetry, it might get a little bit complicated. There we go. So we export the high poly again. Same place. Same name. There we go. And we export now the low poly. Sorry, I missed the... Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I trust the Sarn. I trust Sarn that we're not uh, going crazy on the chat. Okay. Let me save this real quick. Where is it here? And let's do a uh, quick save as well. Let's close ZBrush. We're not going to need it for now. And let's open Substance Painter now. Okay, file, new, and we're going to select our desktop, and this is our school low, perfect. And we're going to be doing 2K, I think 2K is more than enough for this one, let's do OpenGL. Cool, so this is our low poly, we go to our baker, we're going to bake at 2K, and we're going to bake with this skull high. And here's where we're going to notice, as you can see, we got no red spots, so this is a perfect bake. And we just say uh, maybe just a little bit of anti-aliasing, like a four. And uh, that's it. That's the ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion usually is the one that takes a little bit longer. Uh, Razor, yes, you can watch the live streams. Uh, there's going to be the BOD here on the um, on Discord and also on YouTube. And uh, Double Mint, thank you for the follow, man. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. Cool. So now we have the bakes ready. This is the sort of like a game asset or game ready element that we can start working on. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that we can do here inside of uh, Substance to get a, a slightly sort of like hand painted look or feel to it. So I'm going to add a layer. This is going to be my base layer. 
and this layer is gonna just have color and roughness nothing else the roughness is gonna be all the way to the top so it's flat completely flat as you can see there's absolutely no shine to it and now i'm gonna go for like a dark brown color because this is gonna be my my sort of like shadow layer so at any point where i don't have uh, information i'm gonna be using this thing right here now i'm gonna add another layer and this is gonna be the bone layer so i'm gonna add this sort of like beige color like this add a black mask and that beige color is only going to have color as well so you can press alt and click on color to turn everything else off and here unfortunately since we don't have any sort of like um id map or anything we are going to have to to paint this a little bit manually i mean it shouldn't be that much of a problem and since it's masks we can always paint them or adjust them a little bit later There we go. And over here. There we go. Then we're going to add a new layer. It's going to be like the yellowish layer for the hat. Same deal. Just paint the hat. I know that the layers are not perfect. Don't worry. It's just a... It's just the base. It's just the base colors that we're building right now. We're gonna fix and uh, and remove things if we don't want later. There we go. Now uh, the red color. So I'm gonna add a new layer. It's gonna be a red color. Black mask. And this is going to be the red layer here. Perfect. So as you can see, this is already giving us a, a nice effect. But now we need to, to keep building on top of this, right? So um, let's see. Have you thought of using our studio, your studio as an outsource for US companies to hire you and your team for 3D game message? Um, no, it's not an indication studio. We, we have... Um, we have uh what's the worth like our it's a production studio but we have local projects so we've been working with museums here in mexico quite a bit and we do vr experiences so it's we we have our own products we have our own uh offers and and we're not outsourcing we we generate our own projects and we generate our own assets and everything so so far we haven't had the need to become like an outsource uh company but it, we're open to that of course like that could happen in the future uh it says how does a student get some mod privileges for sarn <laughs> that's a long story sarn contacted me when i was back at next dude and um and we were trying to see how we could like grow as a as a brand unfortunately and i've mentioned this before the goals that next dude had did not align to the goals that i had as an artist so that's why i uh departed amicably, amicably like there's no bad blood between us or anything and um and sarn has been helping us with his expertise in uh community and uh and social medias and all that stuff to to grow to to become this so so he's been a very important part of the team um so far which i'm truly appreciative of so big applause for Sarn because he's always keeping the, the Discord alive as well. When I can't answer, he's always there cheering everyone up. Okay, so we're going to add a new layer right here. And this is going to be... Actually, let's go align it all the way to the top. This is going to be the light layer. or the shadow, Let's start with the shadow layer. So for the shadow layer, I'm actually going to do a sort of like dark brownish color. Sort of like this. I'm going to add a black mask and I'm going to add a fill layer. Let's go back with our music. There we go. So here I am going to add a ambient occlusion. I'm going to use the ambient occlusion map. And I'm going to add a levels to invert that ambient occlusion. And we can play around, as you can see, to, to add a little bit of the shadows to the whole thing. So we get this very nice effect that's giving us some interesting shadows. And then we can change this to overlay, for instance, which is going to give us another sort of like slightly different effect as well. So I'm going to go a little bit more intense right there. And then on the overlay, I'm going to bring it down so that we get this sort of like hand painterly effect. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter than this brownish color. And now I'm going to add another fill layer. Again, only color. 
and we're going to be using a sort of like warm mesh color like this and for this one i'm going to use a generator i'm going to use a black mask of course and we're going to be using a generator and this generator is going to be a light generator and the cool thing about the light generator is we can play around where where this light is going to be so we can add the sort of like highlights to our mask or to our it's not a mask to this sort of like thing I really like this, but I kind of want to make this like inverse. Can we invert this? Usually I do this things like sideways. So in this case, I don't think I'm going to use the light. I'm instead going to use the, it's called a position generator. This one, position. And what I'm going to do here is the position gradient is going to be front to back. Like this. And then what we can do is play around. Let's invert this. There we go. So I want to have this thing like hitting from the top, kind of like illuminating the, the top of the element. And then what we can do is we can add another like a uh, fill layer. Actually, not a fill layer. I'm going to add a dirt layer. And I'm going to multiply this, or in this case, divide this. Is it divide? No, let's multiply, but let's invert. There we go. So we get this sort of like effect. It's going to be very low contrast. And we get this effect. We can then add another thing, such as a filter and a blur. And this one I like to change to linear dodge. It'll lower the intensity a little bit. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's giving us this interesting sort of like hand painted effect with the whole thing. It's not the exact same thing as hand painted. If we wanted to hand paint this, we would need to go to a another software as we've mentioned before, which is um, what's the word? Uh, like three D code, because we get a, a nicer effect. Yeah, we, we did the three D print already, uh, Roma, but we had some extra time, so might as well just uh, <laughs> throw in some quick textures, right? So, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. Any more questions, guys? I really want to bring this into, into 3D code, to be honest. I don't remember if I have it installed. I do have it installed. Okay, so... No, but we're not going to have enough time to do the whole... I, I promise we're going to do the whole um, like thing later on with um with 3d code but for now let's do a quick render what about doing like a metal render let's just do a very basic metal render so i'm gonna go here to my elements and i'm just gonna use the smart materials for this there's the bronze so let's use a bronze effect there we go and then we're gonna use the bronze rust add the generator add a black mask add the generator we're gonna add the dirt generator i'm gonna make the contrast a little bit bigger see if an overlay helps that looks pretty nice and then i'm gonna use an aluminum as a metal edgeware so we're gonna add the metal edgeware this one i'm gonna make a linear dodge and the color of the aluminum we definitely need to make this a little bit more bronze like so there we go I'm going to use the trick that you use normally, which is a field layer with like a cloud noise or something to break up the to break up the effect. So let's use cloud say. There we go, cloud stream. And we're going to multiply this. There you go. So as you can see, that breaks up the effect a little bit. Same thing here on the bronze. I think that would work nicely. So let's add a field layer with a like dirt effect. And we're going to multiply this. And as you can see, that reduces, this dirt effect reduces the amount of rust that we have. So it's not like perfectly obvious. And I think it might be a nice touch if the band is like a red metal. So I'm just going to add a, a red color. Add a black mask. And let's paint this red. Hopefully I'm 
honoring the fan base with this fan art right here. Let's break symmetry because it's not perfectly symmetrical. And just finish painting right here. So, by the way, guys, if you're watching this and you're new to the 3D world and you want to learn a little bit more about it, I have two courses right now. Sarn might be kind enough to link to them if you want to check them out. There's a Seabrush course where we do a character, and then there's a, um, a Blender course where we do a weapon. So, yeah. Uh, Copper uh, uh as I mentioned, the best place to buy resin could be Amazon, Mexico Amazon, and Mercado Libre here in Mexico. There we go. So this one, I'm going to make overlay as well, so that it like, lands a little bit with the rest of the elements. And there we go. That looks very cool. Let's uh, export the textures. I'm going to have to export them on the desktop for now. I usually don't do the desktop because it's very messy. Let's go here with... Uh, we're going to export this as Arnold AI Standard. And the PNG is fine. Hit export. Cool. Let's save this. Okay, I'm gonna save it on the on the desktop. There we go. Let's go to Maya. Actually, I just need to delete this one. There we go. Let's create a camera. Panels, electro selected. Something like that, I think. Looks good. And uh, we're going to go, of course, to Arnold. Lights, Skydom Light. And we're going to insert pretty much any Skydom Light. is, is nice. I'm going to use Dancing Hall. I really like using this one. It's very clean. It's like a very like nice white effect. And uh, I'm going to go to the uh, Substance plugin. I'm going to use this option right here, which is Apply Workflow to Maps. And it's very, very, very cool because you just select the elements. And it automatically creates like the the file or the the maps for you so it's this one right here you can see them oh. let's delete history real quick so it should be here as you can see all of the materials are like properly connected you can see them right there right now it looks horrible because we don't have uh, anything but if we turn on lights it should look a little bit closer to what we're looking for let's save this one real quick one piece there we go i'm gonna go to my options change this to gpu and let's do a quick render yeah don't worry capresses no problem i know i know the pains of uh, telmex there we go look at that not bad not bad looking good we're not done yet we're, we're we need to add a couple of lights and, and just add some some more interesting things but this is looking quite nice i would say so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to the resolution and let's do a full HD, so 1080. I'm going to go to system or actually on the render setup, I'm going to turn on a denoiser optics, which is the denoiser that removes, well, the noise of our elements. There we go. I am probably going to up the samples a little bit. So here on our render, I'm going to go to adaptive sampling. I'm going to set this to 10. Should give me, like, the render is going to take a little bit longer, but that's going to give me a cleaner effect. You can see how things are, or should be cleaning up a little bit better. And now for a dramatic effect, let's go here on the exposure. And the exposure is going to be minus three. So now it's going to be very dark. This one, I'm going to go to the visibility of the camera, set this to zero. So we don't have, we don't want the camera to be visible. We just want like the little icon right here. And this is called a two, I think they're called like double side or two side contrast photography, where you have light coming from one side and the other side. So two sides. Uh, yes, of course, Roma, of course. We were gonna, um, we were gonna change that. So no visibility there. Arnold, lights, and we're gonna bring an area light. Rotate this 90 degrees. I'm actually going to make this like very, not super thin, but actually it's fine. Uh, the exposure I'm calculating is going to be like a 10 or something like that. So let's give it a shot. 
Yeah, that's good. Probably a little bit more. So, like a 12. Much better. And now we're going to duplicate. Have this on the other side. And there we go. And if we want to like do a little bit extra, we can just do the traditional color temperature where this is a little bit warmer and this is a little bit uh, like cooler. Now, I think it looks good, but it's very contrasty. So I'm going to bring this guy forward a little bit and rotate it like this. Same for this one and rotate it like this. That's uh, now, now it's too light. So, so I did like that sort of like contrasty look that we had. But not too much. Like I do like this like dark line going across the center. There we go. That's better. What do you guys think? Do you like this one? Oh, nice. There you go. A year ago, gaming. There you go. Cool. Let's do 4K. Let's do a 4K render because I, I feel like this could be a very nice like wallpaper. So, what's do you guys know what the resolution is for 4K? Does anyone have a 16K? <laughs> no, that's gonna break my computer. It's gonna break the computer and break the the stream. So, so no, no, no. Yeah, it looks cool, right? I think I want to add another rim light to be honest. So. I'm going to duplicate this light. And it's going to be a very subtle light coming from the top here. Like just hitting the, the top angle. There we go. Just to like make it pop a little bit more. That's a little bit too much. I'm just going to like bring this back. There we go. Just a little bit of something up there. 3084 by 3084. There you go, King's here. Thank you. Now I was looking for the 169 proportions. So for the 169 proportions, it's 4096 by 2160. There we go. Now we're gonna be able to see every single freaking detail. <laughs> Now we just need to wait for the the noiser to finish. And that's it. So look at that. Look at how much we did in just two hours. We did the... Uh, what's it? We did the, the model. We did the 3D print. We just need to set it up and, and 3D print it. And we did a like nice freaking wallpaper. I'm going to have this wallpaper on the resources folder of our Google Drive. So in case you guys want to use it for your computer or your phone or whatever... It's going to be there, available for you. So, yeah. Yeah, I got the 3080 Ti, so I do have quite a bit of uh, power to, to get this thing. Yeah, this is looking quite nice. Like, this is going to be an amazing thumbnail for, <laughs> for our YouTube video. Am I going to use the render as promo? Yes, of course. Of course, we're going to be using this. And I'm going to 3D print it, and I'm going to paint it. I'm probably going to paint it like this, to be honest. I really like the sort of, like, golden uh, effect. And uh, and it's relatively easy to do. So so yeah, this is gonna be definitely. Let me save the image. File save image. Let's go here to desktop. Let's do one piece. Render. Awesome. Well, that's it, my friends. We're uh, gonna finish a couple of minutes earlier. But if you have any questions, now it's the moment to ask them. And if you just watched the full live stream and you did not follow, come on. I think we deserve one little follow right here. So you should do a giveaway for the keycaps. I, I, I'm not sure how we could do that because it's going to be a little bit expensive to ship it uh, to whatever part of the world you guys are at. But we might, yeah, we might be giving them some coupons or something. Are you planning to do any competition or events? Yes, we're thinking about that. We're, we're definitely going to be doing that. 
Are you gonna stream in real life painting of the king? No, I don't think so. Right now, I don't have the setup to do that. However, I'm gonna be moving from like this studio to another room um, very soon. It's here in my in my house, but it's just gonna be a different place. And I'm gonna have a little bit more space there. So I'll probably I'll be able to have my, my paint setup. I actually have my paint setup over here, but I don't have like the cameras and the lights and everything ready. So so that might be something for, for later. Do I have kids? Yes, I have one little girl. She is um, two years old. Two and a half years old, roughly. I am married, yes. So, yeah. That's it, man. That's it, my friends. Um, thank you very much for this amazing stream. It was a blast. Again, I'm really happy with this final result. This looks very cool. I think we did honor the essence of the of the concept. Uh, and I give it my own little style here. So, yeah. Thank you, my friends. Thank you for being part of this community. Don't forget to check out our Discord, our socials, YouTube, everywhere. We upload a lot of stuff uh, frequently. And um, I'll see you back next week for another amazing stream. Next week, we have our portfolio review. So if you want me to check your portfolio, give you tips and uh, advices on how to improve, you need to go to our Discord channel and submit to the September portfolio review section. Just drop a link, drop your name and a little message of what you want to do as an artist. And I'll be happy to... Um, to help you out there and uh, yeah that's it guys thanks for coming thanks for being part of this amazing community sarn thank you for being here my friend and i'll see you guys back on the next one bye bye